Bitch. What? <laughs> What's up guys and welcome to another video. In today's video, it's Bally Shorts time. Time to be short. Oh! In today's Bally Short, we are talking about a very interesting Bally song that doesn't cost a lot of money on Amazon. That would be the Nabally's Morse. Or is it is it Nabally? We have to make a Morse code joke at some point. I don't beep, know beep, 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 beep. Uh is it is it Nabally's? Is it Nabally's? Is it Nabalis? What could it be? It's a mystery. We're gonna Nibali. find out today. Nabalis. We're talking about Nabalis, baby. Good. What? Brandon? Why would you say that about this wonderful new cup that we have available on willhirsch.gay? I didn't say shit. The cups used to be like this. They were printed by Teespring, but Teespring's print quality is only okay and the cups are kind of like normal. And so these are actually made by like a secondary supplier. I had to pay for like 50 of them, but I bought all of them and now you can buy them and they have nice print. Willhirsch.gay, also pride shirts, yay. Gay. Anyways, the reason we're talking about the Nabali's Morse is because a lot of people requested us to talk about it after we looked at the Bally Shark Mermaid. As you can see, both of these knives are very similar construction wise, but the Morse has a bit of a better overall look than the Mermaid. The Mermaid's a little funkalicious, if you know what I mean. Either way, we were very impressed when we looked at the Bally Shark Mermaid for the first time. And so when the Bally's reached out to us and said, hey, can you take a look at our product, the Morse? We were like, yeah, that sounds great because more cheap Amazon trainers that are potentially good Yes, please. The more the merrier. Oh, oh wow, that <laughs> you hurt ready for that. My, that hurt my heart. <laughs> but yeah, so today we're looking at the Morse and uh, we're gonna do some judging of it with our wonderful system, the Bally Shorts score system or the BS score. Now, uh, I do need to disclose that after we tried this out for the first time, we were so impressed that I actually contacted the Bally's and was like, hey, this is made pretty well, but um, if you tweaked the design a bit, you could probably make it even better. And they were like, wow, would you like to do that with us? And I said, yes. And um, things are happening. <laughs> Anyways, the Morse is a shockingly competent flipper for the price, but how competent is it? Well, let's break that down right now with the first score on the list, unboxing. <laughs> All right, so first up is unboxing. Now, thankfully, because I'm a professional, I forgot to bring the box for this shoot. But on the other hand, Brandon has managed to be a very good box device. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Anyways. The unboxing experience of the Morse is honestly shockingly good for an Amazon Balasong. It's in a very basic box, of course. It's just kind of a little cardboard thingy, but that's fine. However, it's what's inside the box that is important. Inside of this cardboard box is Threadlocker, a admittedly bad screwdriver, and extra hardware. All of these things come together to actually provide a very useful unboxing experience. You see, while the box may not be very fancy, the actual usability of the items inside the box is very important to me when it comes to the unboxing score. And so we give the Morse a seven out of 10, which is pretty high above the uh, five average that we have kind of deemed for normal Chinese unboxing experiences. So yeah, this thing coming with all of that extra stuff is honestly very impressive. Still don't use the Torx driver though, it's bad. Next up, we're talking about tuning. And honestly, the tuning experience of this battle song is really impressive. Both me and Brandon have flipped it quite a lot and we haven't even needed Loctite, which is surprising. Now, Nabalis has actually elected not to include Loctite from the factory in the pivots, instead leaving them dry so that you can apply your own Loctite later. But weirdly enough, even with it dry, it's been a really solid experience. You do have to tighten the pivots every once in a while, but the bushings are well made enough that it doesn't have any tap or even that much play at any given point. Brandon did take the knife apart at one point and found that the washers were very hard to get back in, but that is kind of a normal thing with channel design, bushing based ballasongs, songs, but it is something to note. Therefore, we have given the tuning experience to this ballasong song an eight out of 10. 
pretty solid, pretty high up there. It's definitely very much above average, but it's also not a nine or 10 because while it is good, the hardware is still Chinese manufacturer hardware that's not quite as good as some of the hardware that's used on things like the Crack Arakin or the Serif from Machine Wise or stuff like that. So it's very good, eight, but not nine or 10. All right, now that we've talked about the tuning experience, what about the durability of this ballast song? Well, it's actually also pretty good. Now, to be fair, it is just solid aluminum handles, which is kind of hard to fuck up, but I've seen it fucked up before. Either way, this thing has a shockingly good durability rating. Brandon has put this one through its paces and you can actually, uh, Brandon has put this one through its paces and you can actually see in the B-roll lots of scratches and dents across the entire balafong itself. However, none of these drops, which include onto concrete, have actually had that bad of an effect on the flippability or the action of the knife itself. So while it does take damage and doesn't look as great afterwards, it's honestly, shockingly competent in terms of its build quality. And that means a lot to the durability. And so we give the durability of this Balasong a seven out of 10. Nice and above average, but because it is aluminum, it still doesn't reach that full potential that titanium can have in terms of a nice and durable Balasong, but pretty close. Now, in terms of the ability to flip, the flippability of the dippity hippity bip dip of the Morse, it's, wow. Wow. <laughs> you are whole. <coughs> ah. Thank yeah. you. Doing that two times in one video was uh, maybe a little overboard. You know, I'll solve this. I don't deserve you. <laughs> <laughs> the flippability of this thing is honestly really, really impressive. I have been able to pull off basically every kind of trick that I've wanted to on this thing with relative ease. Now, it's not the most insane flipper in the world. It's obviously not as well tuned as something like the Crack Arakin in terms of its balance being perfect across all points or whatever. And the grip isn't great, but it's also not bad. They solved the grip issue on this Balasong very elegantly using this weird 3D milling sort of style that honestly provides a lot of grip in places that I wouldn't have expected. However, one place that it does fall flat is there is no jimping. You, you just got a nice big flat area on the side and well, that just kind of uh, impacts its ability to be really good in that way. It's not a terrible thing, but it's part of it. However, something that is kind of weird is this roundness at the bottom. I wouldn't say it's bad, but I wouldn't say it's good. It kind of like reduces the amount of area that you potentially have to do ladders, making it easy to like slip out of your hand while you're trying to do one of those. But it also performs pretty well when you do a palm spin, like it like, it feels nice. I don't know, it's weird. But also the 3D shape gives it more of a roundness than you would expect, even though there's not any like rounding on the sides of the handles, meaning that it actually fans better than you would think. It's a pretty impressive ballast song, especially for the price. And that lands it a nice seven out of 10. Once again, as I said, seven, nice and above average. That's a pretty high performer, especially for a $60 knife, at least right now on Amazon. That's pretty good. Yeah. I think the biggest thing it has going for it is probably like it's four-ish ounces. Yeah. And it's, it's like slightly handle bias. And I like that. I like light-ish. Four-ish ounces is, is I think what people are generally preferring more. And for me learning how to flip, which I'm getting better at slowly, yeah. but surely. But yeah, the biggest downfall is nothing on the sides nothing. here. It has good grip on the faces, but on the sides, there's just not a lot there. So like if I wanted to learn how to do ladders on this, probably you wouldn't have a great time. Yeah, probably not a great one to learn ladders on. However, but I will say compared to the one that we looked at from Bally Shark, this thing from Nibali's is way better design wise for flipping. Like, oh yes. The oh. build quality between the two is pretty similar, but the design is way better on that thing. These big fat handles and this freaking like pointy bit, ugh, ugh. Uh, uh, uh. it really gets in the way of the flipping. So honestly, yeah, this is a great thing to see because like Bally Shark tried, but Nibali's I think nailed it. Obviously, I'm sure you would agree the best thing about it is actually the lack of texture on it makes it incredibly insertable. That's right, Brandon. <coughs> oh. 
You did this entirely to yourself. I have no remorse for you. <laughs> okay, so now that we've talked about the flip ability, we need to get into the availability, which is very important. And the availability of the Nabali's Morse is honestly, it's a 10. It's a 10 out of 10. You can, it's a 10. It's a 10 but out of 10. But why? But why? Well, Brandon, my darling, my sweet baby boy who likes to put stuff in his mouth. The reason the Nabali's Morse is a 10 out of 10 in availability is simply because you can buy it. It is available all the time. You can go on Amazon right now, link in the description, and buy one just for yourself or for your friend. It's pretty cool. Amazon may own our country and souls, but they also own the Morse, and you can give them money to own it yourself anytime you want. 10 out of 10. Pretty impressive. And to be fair, let's take a moment and realize that the reason that that is possible is because the power of Chinese manufacturing and the economies of scale difference. When you have something like Squid Industries or Flytanium with their products like this, they're making all of that in-house, they're making a lot of it in the USA, they're making it in smaller facilities, smaller quantities. In China, they're able to make something like this very broadly and you know be very available all the time. So that is part of the equation because China, but that's not necessarily a bad thing either. Now, we can get in to the value score. Now, here's the thing to note about the value score. The value score is a very weird score because essentially it is me and Brandon's opinion on the ballast song based off of all of the previous categories kind of combined together into this weird amalgamation. However, for the Nabalis Morse, we give the value a 10 out of 10. And I think it was relatively easy for us to come to that conclusion. The fact of the matter is this thing flips honestly pretty great for a price of $60 and it's available all the time. And those three factors alone are enough to probably make this thing worth a 10 out of 10 in terms of value. However, that also includes a pretty nice unboxing experience with extra hardware and cool stuff like a bottle opener built into the blade. And it actually works. We tested that. You can actually yeah, open bottles does, with it. it. Unlike yeah. this one from Bally Shark, the bottle opener did not work. That's one thing. Nabali's really figured it out with the uh, bottle opener. The Bally Shark could not open a bottle, so. <laughs> Cool. And here's the other thing to know. You have Amazon's customer service backing this thing up. So if you have a problem, you could either return it directly to Amazon or something that's interesting is Nabali's actually has their email linked in the manual that you get with this thing. And they do respond to that email. So if you have a problem, they'll potentially send you a brand new one for free. 10 out of 10 value, thank you. All right, so all together, we finally come to the total score. Now, one thing to note about the total score is that it is not a great representation of the actual placement of this Bala song in terms of how good it is against other things. If you want to actually break down like how good this thing is against the Crack Racken or whatever, you need to look at the individual scores that we give each night. Is flipping really important to you? Well, then look at the flippability score rather than the total score. The total score is useful for ordering the list, but it's not a great identifier of the actual full picture of a ballast song. However, the final score for the Nabali's Morris is 49 out of 60 possible points, which is pretty impressive. Honestly, this thing is a very, very good knife for the money. For $60, you're getting a very impressive flipper. However, something that I think is an interesting question is, would I buy one? And the answer is, yeah, honestly, I would buy one of these. I would buy one to beat and flip and, you know, just practice a bunch of tricks on. This is something you don't have to spend a lot of money on and that you don't have to worry too much about beating. Another thing that this is great for is people getting into the hobby for the first time. This provides an incredible way to get into balisong flipping without having to worry about lesser quality stuff like the Bally Shark Mermaid that's kind of weird to flip or the earlier Nabali stuff which is made of G10 and while it's good, this is a lot better. 
and it doesn't fall into the weird moral gray area of say something like The One, where it's like, it's kind of a clone company, but also kind of not. So I don't know if I really want to do that. The thing to note here about something like the alien from The One is that The One is a clone company. Yep. They've made all of their money from producing clones. Nabali's does not make clones, and that's kind of the big difference here, right? And those companies, they're working on it. They're starting to make more original stuff, but in terms of where we come from, making original content ourselves, we don't really like the idea of stealing it, somebody else's work. Uh, so th th this is great. Yeah. Get that. Get this. Speaking of this, I think it's important also to understand that we are working with Nabali's on this. This is an upcoming, this is the first prototype, but this is an upcoming Bala song that we're working on with Nabali's, and this is kind of the first time you're probably gonna be seeing it in this way. There's a video on my second channel where people react to this first prototype at Blade Show, but it's evolving. I'm hoping that we can make some interesting changes to this platform to kind of make it a little bit better, but, for right now, this is kind of the best thing that you can currently buy on Amazon. And for 60 bucks, that's very impressive. But that's pretty much it for this video right now. Thank you guys for watching. Huge thank you to our Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing and give us the ability to produce content like this. We love reviewing Bala songs and we never expected it to become a business. You know what I mean? I made my first Bala song video simply because I liked the Bala songs that I had and I had been flipping for a long time and I was like, I know how to make videos, I can do that. And now we've got all of these incredible people supporting us in this project of reviewing Bala songs and it's insane. So seriously, thank you guys so much for your support. And if you would like to support us as well, please consider doing so. We have a private community discord as well as different perks like uh, patrons get to see these videos days in advance of anybody else. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Thank you guys for watching and uh, I'll short you later. But Will, the video can't be over. I need to make more of my stupid puns. Brandon, no more puns. <laughs> <laughs>